In this scene, we're investigating the cell size parameter. We'll learn how this seemingly simple parameter has a big effect on the structure of a flow field. We'll see how reducing the cell size can increase the detail in a flow, and we'll compare those side by side. We'll then take a look at the importance of the cell size when considering input objects such as splines. So let's get right into it. All right, so here we are in Cinema 4D. And as you can see, we already have a demo system ready to go to help us show off the cell size parameter of our flow field. Now let's click on our flow field object and we can see what's going on. Now we have the flow mode set to random, which means that each of the cells has a random vector inside it. And then we've set the field mode to velocity at a speed of 100 and a strength of 100%. So essentially we'll be giving the particles uh, this direction and also a speed of 100 as they enter each cell. So let's, uh, let's focus now on the cell size parameter, which is what this video is about. And what this essentially is, is you can think of it as a resolution. So currently we have a, of a flow field size of 400 units by 400 units by 400 units. And we have a cell size of 40 units. Now, if we do 400 divided by 40, that gives us 10. So if we look in one of the side views, you can see all the different vectors along this row here. Uh, you can count these along and we should have 10 cells. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that's going to be the same in each direction because the cell itself is a cube. So it's an exact cube with 40 by 40 by 40. And then essentially that divides up our entire flow field with cells of that size. So if I reduce that size, you'll see it starts to generate more and more and it gets denser and denser the lower the cell size I go. So it's a, you can think of it as a higher resolution the smaller the cell size is. So let's go back to our default of 40. And if I actually, I'll increase the transparency on our vectors and press play, you can see we get this nice flowing simulation. Now, if I increase the cell size, we're gonna get a lower resolution sort of uh, flow field, and you'll see we get much larger swooping curves, and it's almost like a lower resolution noise. And then if I go the opposite way, and go right down to something really small, and maybe if I even turn off the display because they're so dense, turn off the vectors, you see we get this much tighter curling. Now, there's a much clearer way to see the effect the cell size has on the simulation, and that's to actually have it only one cell thick and look at it from a top-down view. So I'm going to hide this system or to deactivate that system completely, and let's take a look at our random demo null, and we have different cell sizes here. So if I turn one of them on, you'll see we have a, an array of particles in a grid, and then the flow field itself, if I actually show a darker viewport, you can see the cell size on this particular one is very large. So we have a cell size of 100, and the size of the container, the size of the flow field itself, is only 200 by 100 by 400. So that's 200 across, so obviously if it's a cell size of 100, we only have two cells across. And it's a 400 in Z, so we have one, two, three, four cells that way, so eight total, and it's a very large flow field. So if I press play, you can see this is a very gentle, large scale noise like so, or flow. And then if I turn on our medium cell size, we jump up or, or down in size, but jump up in the number of cells. So we're at 30 at this point, 30 units cell size. And you can see we get much tighter, much more fast turning particles with the smaller smaller size and then i've got a much smaller one at a unit size of 10 a cell size of 10 and there we go and if i look at the top view you can see here the difference we get with the varying cell size and not only can we think of this in terms of the tighter flow or the more detailed flow as we get a smaller cell size, we can also think of it as the particles being given a different direction or a different velocity vector more frequently. So if we go back to the beginning here, in the much larger cell size uh, flow field here with the eight cells, we are getting the particles, even though the, the size of this container is the same as the other two, there, is, there are far fewer cells and therefore the particle gets a new direction far less frequently. So if I press play, obviously we can see here 
the particles are moving, but they're in the same cell with the same velocity vector for much longer. Whereas these ones, and even the small ones here, are getting a new direction far more frequently as they move through the, the cells. And there's more cells to move through, of course. So there we have our base understanding of the cell size parameter in the XP flow field. There is another good demonstration of this, and that's when we use the flow field with splines. So we're going to jump into a new scene and explore how the cell size relates to when we're having the particles follow along a spline. So here we are in that new scene and we have the star spline here and you can see it's in the shape of a star with this indentation here and it's going to help us explain the relationship between cell size and splines. So the flow field itself is set to the a long spline flow mode. Uh, it's set to a velocity similar to how we had it before of uh, 100 units, 100%, and then we've linked our star spline up here. Now the cell size itself is 40 units, it's the default size, 40 units, and I've made it one cell thick, so it's 40 on the X. So if I press play now, we'll see our particle starts at the beginning of the spline, and it moves through the flow field, and it's being told to change direction, but you'll see quite quickly that it is not a very accurate representation of our star shape, and that's because the cell size is so large that it's not sampling the spline particularly accurately. So what we'll do is we'll reduce the, the cell size right down. We'll go for a, a cell size of 10, and I'll change the depth to 10 as well. And I'll hit play again. And now you'll see that it follows much closer to the spline because it's giving it's got lots more information, and it even catches that little detail there. You can see it's not perfectly accurate, and that's because the flow field is only using the spline as a source to generate its, its velocity vectors, its vectors inside each cell, and they aren't exactly on the spline itself. They are based on the grid uh, of the flow field itself. So if I go down even more, say to five, and the more cells you, you need to generate, the higher resolution it is, the longer it can take the, the flow field to generate. So it's just a warning there. Now you can see here, even though we've gone for a smaller cell size, it actually misses the detail here. And that's purely because the particle, you can see it ends up moving away here because of the, the way the cells are changing their, their vectors. And the, the relationship of the position of that spline to those vectors means that it's offset around this part of the flow field. And because it's far enough away from there, it just uses the blended cells here and they kind of just process along and past it. So even decreasing the cell size isn't a guarantee that your particles will follow exactly along there. But the flow field is best when used with multiple particles and sort of natural flowing motion of particles. So let's change our emitter to a circle. Let's make it flat to the area there. And also let's make it fire out way more particles. So let's play that back. And we can see we get a pretty good representation of our star shape. And now we've got more particles to sort of fill in the, the information as it comes around. And that's looking really nice. Of course, if we go back to a large cell size at this point, let's go to 20. We'll still get an approximation of the spline, but it's much smoother in its motion. So this might be desirable on certain projects. And of course, we can control this using the cell size.